In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can be able to build a fully functional mobile app in just minutes using an AI platform called work.com. No coding required. I will demonstrate to you how you can be able to take any app idea or UI designs from platforms like dribble.com, feed it into AI agents, and watch them build a production-ready meal delivery app that works on iOS, Android, and the web. And we will go from zero to a complete app with features like meal selections, order tracking, user profiles, and subscription management, all deployable to GitHub and ready for real databases. So if you wanna turn your app ideas into realities without writing a single line of code, let's dive right in. All right, so before we jump in, a quick intro for those who are new here. My name is Eric, and I have spent years as a senior software engineer at companies like Amazon, AWS, and Microsoft. And I have started this YouTube channel to share everything I have learned along the way, from AI encoding to automations, Web3, career developments, and more, all broken down into practical tutorials that you can actually follow. So if you're ready to level up, make sure to check out my YouTube channel and hit that subscribe button. Now let's get back to the video. All right, so to get started, first thing first, we navigate to work.com and here you can see that this is work platform and we can be able to simply just provide the prompts and the design and have AI agent here to build the application for us. But before we start, here are two things that we're gonna do. One is we're gonna provide the prompts and basically we're gonna have AI to do the research. The other one is gonna be creating the design. So in terms of creating the design, we're just gonna look for designs that other UX designers have created, and we're just gonna copy that and have AI agent to build something that's similar. So in terms of the UI templates, here what we're gonna do is we're gonna to navigate to a platform called dribble.com where we can be able to explore all the designs or templates that other designers have designed for us. So simply, let's say we have a business idea or app idea for meal delivery applications. So let's say if I were to search this, here you can see that there are all kinds of templates or designs that we can choose from. So simply, we're just gonna choose one of them. Let's say if I were to choose this one, I'm just gonna simply copy this image and navigate to work.com. And here I'm just gonna paste that image. And once we have our design figured out, now it's time to focus on how we can be able to create a prompt for the application. What I usually do here is I basically have a large language model here to define the prompts on exactly what are the features, the user flows, using a large language model here to define those things. So in this case, let's take a look at the app requirements that the large language model sets. So here you can see that this is the title for the application, right? This is the name. And then here we have our app overview. Like the goal here is that we're trying to build a meal delivery subscription app for a specific area for the customers. And they can be able to choose or browse weekly manuals. They can be able to select the meals, manage the subscriptions and track deliveries. And here is basically the exact user flows on how users gonna use the application. So for example, we have our onboarding and registrations, weekly manual selections, subscription management, deliver tracking, loyalty and rewards. And then there's also key app screens. So like for example, different pages in the applications, like the home screen, the manual screen, the order screen, right? The profile screen and so much more. And there's also the app behaviors on what are the notifications the application can be able to notify users. For example, the manual available or the food is delivered, right? User can be able to get notified for those things. Uh, they can also be able to have a default behaviors on if users miss the selection deadlines, what are the things that they can do with this, right? And then also the deliver rules. And here we also have the priorities on what are the features that we're gonna build for different phases. So first we have our must have for the MVP, then we also have our phase two and phase three for the nice to have, right? So we try to break down into different phases for the developments. And here is the success criteria, as well as the built instruction for the large language model. So here, basically, you can see that this is gonna be a prompt that I basically have claw code to write. And of course, if you want to use this file for your reference to basically build on top of this, or maybe make some modifications, and I'll make sure to attach this file inside of my Discord channel, inside of the code share, which you can find here, so that you can be able to download this and be able to use it for your own purpose. So once we have this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy this prompt, which I have defined by the large language model. I'm just gonna paste it here to this application and have the large language model here to build this. So you can see here that I have submitted the prompt and let's wait for a bit until it fully builds this for the version one. And here you can see that currently Rogue here is trying to think and try to understand the requirements that we set. So let's wait for a bit until it fully built for this first version of this application. All right, so while it's building, you can see that it's currently running into errors. So we have three errors while running the application. So here I'm just gonna click on fix all and it's going to basically generate the templates or the prompts to basically tell exactly what the error issue is. And here you can see that Rogue here is trying to fix that error based on what we have already. 
Awesome, so now you can see that with just one fix, we have our application fully complete, and here is the first version of the application. So let's play around with it. So currently you can see that it's selected with iOS, but we can change it and also view the application in Android, or also the website version as well. So here you can see that here is the main or the homepage, right? And we can be able to select the weekly meals, uh, here you can see these are the weekly meals we have. So we can select eight meals for this week's for the delivery. And here you can see we can add it to the cart. Uh, we can be able to add more items, right? So it adds the total. And here we can also be able to select the orders, right? So the past orders currently is out of deliveries. Obviously, these are all fake data, but at least you can see that the uh, the UI elements for the mobile app are rendering correctly. And here you can see that we can be able to view all the orders. We can both click on track orders here. Obviously you can see the button here is not working, which we can be able to further improve and add more features or add more onto this. Uh, we can also click on profiles to see how many points we have, the profile, the subscriptions that we have, as well as the delivery address and the payment methods, cancel the subscriptions and so much more, right? So at least you can see that the front end design here for the mobile application is pretty much complete, right? We have all the features we want and knows, tells you exactly what the, next, uh, what the next delivery date is, right? So let's take a look at the Android view version of that as well. So it's gonna connect it in the Android app. And here you can see that we have the exact same layout as what we have for the iOS version. So pretty much we have the main bar for the next delivery date. Here you can see that we have select zero meals selected. So we can select this week's meals, right? So we can add items to the carts. Uh, we can select more. We can also click on orders, click on profiles and be able to see all those things. And like what we mentioned, because it's using React Native, it also has the ability to build a React web application with this. So let's also take a look at the web version of this. So this is what the web version of this looks like. So here you can see, we can also be able to do everything just like what we did for the mobile version. So we can be able to select items. We can be able to uh, track the orders, the menus, the homepage, everything, right? Pretty much everything that we just defined is pretty much here, okay? Now, of course, we can also be able to publish this. So let's click on this, copy this link. And here you can see that all we had to do here, just scan with the mobile camera and be able to view the application on our phone, on our devices. Now, before we jump into the next section, let me give a quick shout out to the sponsor of this video, TestBright. TestBright is an AI agent that's specifically for software testing. With the release of the TestBright MCP, you get a chance to use the TestBright MCP inside of your coding IDE, like clock code, cursor, windsurf, and more. With simply just adding the configurations inside of the MCP settings, you can use it right away. With the TestBright MCP, it not only understands what you want, because it first read through the code base, understand the documentations, as well as validates the results that your agent wrote. And it is doing that by automatically generating the test plan for the PRD documentations and producing the test cases and test coverage without any manual inputs. And then from there, it will basically start to execute the test and then be able to send the reports back to you by telling you exactly what's broken. With normal coding accuracy of 42% from other coding agents, we can be able to improve that with TestBright MCP with the feature delivery accuracy of 93%. So if you're interested to try it out, you can check out this video that I made, or you can check out the link in the description for more details. Now, come back to the application. There's also additional features that we can do. For example, other than the publish, we can also download the source code for this entire application, or we can also connect it and save our projects onto a GitHub repository. So here I'm just gonna connect to GitHub. And simply what I can do here is I can be able to fork the code onto my GitHub repository. And here we can simply just create a repository inside of our GitHub using this integrations. Here, I'm just gonna name this to be Fit, Fitbox Mobile Meal Delivery App, uh, Mobile Delivery App, and we're just gonna create a repository for this. Okay, so now the repository is created. Let's view this inside of our GitHub as well. And here inside of our GitHub, you can see that we have a repository, which currently you can see that we have our readme as well as all the code that we saw for the mobile preview. So here you can see this is the app, right? which contains all the app file for all the pages, all the tabs, right? The home page, the layout page, the, the menu page, orders, profiles, everything. And then inside of the project, you can see that we have all the components, right? So the deadline timers, the meal cards, everything. We can literally just build on top of the code that we have. But other than that, there's also additional features that we can do. For example, we can also change the models. So currently I'm using the Sonnet 4. There's also options where we can use the GPT-5. So there's multiple models that we can actually choose from. And of course, let's say if there is a features that we wanna build, for example, back to the iOS app, 
let's say we're trying to manage the subscriptions and let's say if I were to click on the delivery address, I'm not able to change my delivery address. I can be able to actually tell the application to do so. So here, let's say if I were to change the model to GPT-5 and here I'm just gonna attach a screenshots and basically tell the role here to basically add a feature to have the ability to change the address for the user. So let's say if I were to send this request, let's take a look at what the result look like for Roke. All right, so after some changes, here you can see that if I were to navigate to the profile, if I were to click on the delivery address, here is where we can be able to update our delivery details. So you can see that we can be able to change our streets, our cities, province, postcode, everything, right? So pretty much that's how we can be able to use the roke.com here to build a app from simply just using prompts or natural language here and also using some images to be able to create the app or make any further modifications. Now, that's pretty much it for this video. If you do found out in this video, please make sure to like this video, consider subscribing for more content like this. But with that being said, I will see you in the next video.